Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World. We are kicking off day two of three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and analyst, Rob Streche. Rob, we're both fresh from the keynote. Uh, lots of big announcements, refinements, new innovations, a coming out party for Claire GPT. What struck you? Let, let's, let's start with from the beginning. What are your, your high level observations? Well, I, I like how they really combined a lot of demos and showing how Claire GPT worked, how you could really easily get to a RAG infrastructure for AI uh, using their designer uh, and being able to actually just take out uh, in doing the fictitious claims processing, take out a manual step, put a uh, vector database in and you know, your LLM in there to do some AI. Uh, and I really like the fact that they talked about a lot of the guardrails and governance and how it all, you know, the rubber meets the road of AI. Yeah, I mean, and to back up, Claire, G Claire GPT is ChatGPT for enterprise data. Correct, yeah, it's their, their being a purpose-built version of ChatGPT that goes in and is able to go through, and it not only is actually like you would normally do with the prompting of GPT, but it really has human in the loop. And I think Gaurav actually talked about, and we'll have him on, I believe, tomorrow, and talked about how it goes through and gives you these steps and gives you the steps to understand, are you doing it right? So you can say, yeah, I want to do that. Really helping take the toil out of data wrangling. Yes, exactly. I can't hear data wrangling without picturing <laughs> the, the lasso and, and, the, and the, cow, the cowboy hat. Uh. But exactly, and I think that, you know, that's, that's something you bring up a lot, and I really appreciate you bringing it up, because it is such a big part of our day-to-day -day existence with work, is that there is, we are inundated with data and having to think through and remember all these checklists and steps. And, and the fact that this era of Gen AI that we are, we are living in, but we're really is just beginning, um, it's going to have a massive impact on this cognitive load and the problems that we have with our jobs. Absolutely, and I think, again, it was really interesting. They kicked it off with Royal Caribbean being on stage and talking to how they're using this data to really grow their entire revenue. And I think, again, they leaned in. I mean, you talk about a company that was hit hard during the pandemic and all of this and how they've come back and really providing and focusing on better customer experiences through data. And I think being able to get to AI faster, how you do that without having to have all these expertise, I think that was the simplicity message that they tied throughout uh, was fantastic. I thought that that was really key to how you do it ethically, within compliance, making sure that you're getting ahead of regulations, but get there. I could not agree more because I think that something that's really come out at, at this, at Informatica World, is the importance of engaging business. And, and in having Royal Caribbean on the main stage, talking about the four C's, uh, clarity, connecting the dots, and, and he, he made this really brilliant analogy about having, looking through the microscope and the telescope. And because it really is this fine balance of making sure you are looking at the details, but not getting too caught up in the weeds and looking forward, looking ahead. Um, another C is change management, and fourth is continuous learning. And these are all really sort of big picture leadership stuff that we're talking about. I mean, of course it's the technology too, but it is all of the, the, the steps involved in really making fundamental shifts in how, in how companies do business. And I think, as you said, we, this can't get lost in the fact that the, this is all to the end of trying to improve the customer experience and build loyalty. I mean, that, that's what all these organizations are trying to do here. Right, and, and I think, again, it, it's that how you build these 360 apps that they talk about and really not just customer 360 but processes and how you're injecting the data and how you understand your data products. Tying it back to MDM, which is kind of the master data management, which is kind of their bread and butter where they started, but also looking at you know, the acquisition of Privitar and how they're bringing that back in and how they're really looking at building out. And I, I, I have to say, out of not only did they go deep into the tech, to put it mildly, I think what they also did is 
that I would say is very rare and worth going back and taking a look at is they talked about their roadmap and where mm. they're going mm -hmm. and leaning in for, a, you know, basically a 30 year old company that's been doing data. And, you know, George Gilbert and I talked about this when we talked to Gaurav, you know, a couple months ago that really they are doing things that other companies like Databricks and Snowflake and others out there, DBT Labs, are trying to catch up to. They've been doing it for 30 years. And I think there's, there is that history with it, but it's not stale. And I think that, you know, again, bringing GPT, Claire GPT, and being able to have co-pilots that assist you in building these things out and building out these processes and what I would, you know, what we call data products and data apps. I also, I, I thought it was really good. I thought the, you know, injecting the demos in to show how easy it was and, you know, I loved, you know, them talking about, hey, we got to show it to believe it kind of thing. And I, I think that's so true. I agree, and I think that in, in doing these demos, showing the increased functionality, showing um, how you can, you, showing how easy it is, how simple it is for people even necessarily without the data science background, um, I, I think that that is a very powerful. Do you think, and, and also the sneak peek about the roadmap, which as you rightly pointed out, not a lot of companies do let, let people behind the curtain, but do you think it will lead to this massive increase in productivity that, that Informatica ha has suggested? I, I, I think that they are really putting the tools in the hands of the data engineers that really simplifies it so that they can answer better questions for the businesses. And I think one of the things, for instance, that when Gaurav gave his uh, Claire GPT example and he went into the data lineage, that, that's hard. Mm -hmm. That is like super hard to go forwards and backwards from the business logic and the business metadata all the way through the actual data and the lineage. Because they sit on top there and they have the catalog features and they're, it's very robust already, doing it in there across different data silos, I think can help accelerate those organizations that are looking to really you know, hone in on, I got to get a handle on all this data, I have these data silos, I don't know which you know, vector database to use, that cognitive load that we always talk about, I, I see a lot of pieces in here of the platform that really can help with that. Well, speaking of lineage, another another uh, guest speaker on the, on the at the at the keynote, sorry, was the chief data officer at Takeda Pharmaceuticals, and she came out and she really was talking with with Amit Walia, the the CEO, about the role of the chief data officer and how much it has really transformed in recent years. And she talked precisely about that. It's about you know, figuring out the lineage. Um, she talked about MVPs being important, engaging the business, and really improving data literacy across the organization because, because you, that kind of knowledge, that kind of skill set is just so increasingly important and it is up to the chief data officer to make sure everyone is literate. Yeah, I, I, I thought it definitely was a good juxtaposition between the two customers that were on stage and where they were in their life cycles. Because obviously Takeda is way further down. I mean, AI has been used in pharmaceuticals for years, like traditional AI. So again, when she talked about how many different products and how many different models they're using, totally made sense. And I think to that point, when you're a chief data officer for a company that, I mean, pharmaceuticals, yes, they make a product, but at the end of the day, data science is at the core of pharmaceuticals. All of the discovery, the drugs, all, looking at the results of doing to make sure that you can meet FDA regulations and get something launched and doing all, data is at the heart of what they're doing there and I think being able to make it simplified. She talked about all the different data silos, all the different ways they used to do data wrangling and how they've really used IDMC to really bring that the cloud platform to bring that together in one place. And also cut down the number of vendors. Yeah. Which was, I think, a very important point. And obviously Informatica well, is Informatica is likes that a lot. <laughs> that, that, that's for sure. I mean, it was a good, you know, again, I, I like the, you know, pitch for a 30% discount on Caribbean cruises, <laughs> you know, Car the Caribbean, yeah, uh, Royal Car I, Caribbean. I'll, I'll take that. But, uh, you know, I also like the fact that, you know, they're talking about how they're using it. And there's a lot of customers here. I mean, there's just, uh, they, 
rattled off a number of uh, them, but also a lot of the partners. And we're talking to a number of them over today and tomorrow, uh, a lot of the global system integrators that actually have practices with that. And I also liked kind of where it got to where you see that they're leaning into things with Microsoft, not just you know, Azure GPT and things of that nature, which helps keep it you know, secure and private, the data, but also that they're leaning in with Scott Guthrie. Uh, you know, Microsoft Build is going on the same week. There's a lot of people I know at that. It's, it's a busy week all it around. Is indeed. It but, is indeed. you know, Scott Guthrie, you know, getting on with the meet and really talking through the relationship and why, you know, Fabric and Informatica play really well together. And I, I think that's critical because, again, it gives Microsoft a, an advantage in where they're partnered with Informatica, who's been doing this forever. Well, we have so much to dig into over the next two days. So much fun to have, to have you on the desk with me. Uh, stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Strecce. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in tech, enterprise news, and analysis.